Hi everybody, it's Nate with Crypto College, and today we're going to be going over our review process for how we uh, initially vet games and what are the sort of things that we kind of look for. Um, now this isn't an extensive guide, obviously we take into uh, more things into consideration than what we're going over in the video, uh, but there's a certain section in our Discord, if we go over here, uh, called P2E Games, and these are games that have been vetted by one of the professors. Uh, for general confidence. This, this is the primary focus. We assign a general confidence score and there's a bunch of variables we, we assign with it uh, to help a user quickly and easily understand why a confidence score is so high and also let you uh, sort of give you the information you might need to know uh, to decide to get into a project or not or even further looking, right? Because there's, there's hundreds of play to earn games out there. There's new ones coming out every day. It's quite, it's quite uh, frankly, a full-time job to to vet every single one of them. So that's why we, we sort of encourage, let us do that for you. Uh, if, if it doesn't make the list, then uh, it's probably not a very good project. So you should feel safe in here looking at a, a reviewed um, score, regardless of the confidence score, right? Because if we had no confidence in the project, we just simply wouldn't list it. So let's look at uh, up here, the specific variables we go over, go over and why they are important. So we're gonna look at Bomb Crypto here and we can see that we've assigned a four out of five confidence score. Now, this doesn't mean like we think the game is good or everyone should get into it, right? A five out of five confidence score doesn't mean it's better or more profitable than, than something that's a two out of five. It's a comment on how much information is available and how resilient a project is, right? So if we have if we have zero confidence is, is rug pull, then a five out of five confidence would be highly unlikely to be a rug pull. So there are objective metrics we use uh, with a sprinkling of subjectivity at the end based on our experience. Um, but that's that's one of the, the most difficult things to understand about a confidence score. Um, so let's go ahead and look at Bomb Crypto, uh, the website. So this is the primary website. And uh, the, the first CC is assigned based on first impressions. So what are the things we're looking for? Well, we're looking for time invested. This is especially true in a project that hasn't been released yet, right? So when we're trying to understand if something's a rug pull or not, we want to say, well, how much time have they put into it? Um, what sort of plans do they have? Are they giving us anything? Right. So let's actually, before we do that, let's look at Phantom Galaxies. So Phantom Galaxies is not out yet. They do have a playable alpha, but let's pretend that they don't. And we're just going off first looks so we can see that. Whoa. OK, cool website. They have some 3D animations here. Um, looks like it's somewhat cinematic. I'm scrolling down. Uh, it looks like they have their their contract address. Um, they have a roadmap. So let's review the roadmap. It's very simple. Um, we're in quarter two, 2022. Origin Centuries, Generative Avatars, Early Access. Okay. And then this is the kicker, right? So what do we have here? Well, this is massive. We have actual in-game footage uh, of them inside, I believe, Unreal Engine. So we're witnessing actual custom gameplay. And now the next question you want to ask yourself is, is this a normal template, right? Is this the Unreal Engine default avatar running through 3D space? Or are there custom assets? How much time did they invest in these right here? Well, I can tell you I've never seen this before. Um, it looks beautiful. It's real easy to do on Unreal Engine, so it's not really the graphics that are impressive, but it's the custom assets. I've never seen a game like this, a Gundam fighter in space, so they must have done this by hand. Uh, they, they must have spent a lot of time on this project. So that right there is almost an immediate plus one confidence score. Um, because if you were trying to rug pull or you were trying to gain a quick buck, you wouldn't spend this much time in generating custom assets and putting something up like this. You you would maybe have a short one minute cinematic. Maybe you paid someone on Fiverr to do it for two, three hundred bucks um, with some quick CGI. Uh, yeah, so this is a little bit later than when we first reviewed the project, but that was the thought process. Now they have a playable alpha. So if I go through and they have a playable alpha, that's automatically plus one star as well. So this project, if I was just looking at it, is plus two stars on game alone. I haven't even looked at the tokenomics yet. Um, 
And so that's that's the first two stars is like, what do you what have you given me and what have we got in here? Um, because a lot of rug pulls will do so many cookie cutter website pages with minimal effort. Um, you got to be particularly careful with like 8-bit art um, just because it's so easy to generate that 8-bit art, right? Um, let's look at this other website. I think it was Juju. Juju NFT. It was like bad Juju. Juju Devils. So this was, I believe, somewhat of a rug pull. And I'm just looking at the website. I remember the first time I said, okay, this looks kind of cool, right? Um, let's scroll down. The website's kind of basic in these NFTs right here. So the NFTs really threw me off. They look very basic. It's like all they did was change some simple designs, right? The silhouettes almost exactly the same in all of these. Maybe they slightly changed it, but you could definitely mass produce this format. Um, it also looked pretty flat, right? Um, it's just different textures. There's not really anything unique. Um, it looks like they were trying to fit into classes. I just didn't really, I didn't think like this took much effort, right? A, a person with, with a quick hand, uh, and drawing can make, can make six of these. Um, and the other thing that kind of threw me off was that, uh, they're all very themed, right? Uh, so we don't know what, uh, what, how many layers this has. Did they, did they make 4,000 layers? Cause it looks like these are one hand, these are hand drawn one offs. Um, so that's just something I didn't like about the project. Uh, they are also not public. Their identities aren't public, which is fine. Uh, people have a right to their own privacy, but um, it doesn't help, right? Um, it never, it never helps. Uh, it's not something you want to throw, throw, throw away simply because they're not public. But yeah, that was more of a side tangent, just specifically since we were talking about artwork. So now let's go back through to Bomb Crypto. And and, uh, and and go our way down. So tags. Well, why do we have tags right here? Um, because there's a lot of different genres that a lot of people might not want to play. So our tags are arcade, idle, 8-bit, Bomberman, browser. Okay, so that's, we've known, we've played that game. It is it is Bomberman. So when we look at this website, it is 8-bit, so that's a minus point, right? But it's emulating Bomberman. And there's no shame in that. Bomberman has been around for 50 years um, it's a tried and true game. It's It's been made and remade like 30 times. So that was a massive plus one when we first reviewed the project. We said, it's Bomberman. They're copying Bomberman. I'm not sure the legality of it, but it's a tried and true system. And um, that game was fun as hell, to be completely honest. So uh, it's really easy. So they don't have to worry about gameplay because the gameplay is proven to be fun. So that was our plus one star. The other thing, uh, what well, the other stars we'll go through later. Um, so what about the general website? It's fine, right? It kind of looks like a cookie cutter website. You don't lose points on it, uh, but you're not gaining any special. Uh, it's nothing like Phantom Galaxies, right? Um, so release date, October 21, October 1st, 2021. That kind of tells you how early or late you're at. You know, if you're reviewing this in February, you're like, oh, wow, you know, it's been released for six months already. That means there's a lot of data. Let me go look at the coin chart. The next category is chain. You want to know what chain it's on. Um, is it worth getting into? Uh, there's there's about six major chains right now. You can't have funds on everything, um, and you might not want to be on everything. Uh, you might have a lot of funds in the Binance Smart Chain, so you might want to stick with games like that. Um, and you sort of know what kind of gas fees you're dealing with, right? If you see an F symbol with the Ethereum logo, you know you're in for a ride, and you know you're going to have to invest hundreds of dollars just to cover gas fees. So that, that really helps. Uh, answer a lot of questions. The coin, Bitcoin, and the contract address. This is major to prevent scams. You, we always put the contract address because so you can just copy and paste it and get the coin. Um, you don't want to be clicking links. You don't want to be getting fake duplicate coins. Um, this is massive, and we, we encourage everyone to just get the contract address uh, from here. Uh, the coin value. This will obviously fluctuate, um, but it puts you in a ballpark, right? And it puts you in a ballpark with reference towards the max token supply. So generally the larger token supply, the higher the potential value of the coin. So if we go to coin market cap of, uh, coin, oops, I think I, 
sorry, I misspoke. It's um, market cap of. There we go. Uh, we are able to type in two coins. So our reference coin is always Axie Infinity. And our second coin, let's look at Bomb Coin. So we can see that if B Coin were to have the market cap of Axie Infinity, which is one of the largest play to earn games, it will be at $150. What is going into that equation? Well, the total volume, the total potential supply. So a lot of game tokens have an infinite supply. It allows them to print more and allows it to distribute rewards. This is a primary factor in rug pulls. Uh, it's what allows you to just keep minting and pumping out new coins, keeping earnings really high to get that first big pump, um, and then pulling the rug for maximum uh, st as soon as the stability starts faltering. So the fact that this is a governance token and a utility token, and that's what's being distributed as rewards, is a plus one. So that get, that allowed Bomb Crypto to gain another CC score. Why is that important? Um, because it uh, it is a deflationary token. Um, that doesn't mean it will always uh, be deflationary, but it won't be inflationary. And that's one of the, the, the big uh, hurdles that a project has to overcome for them not to drop to zero. So it's highly unlikely that with this only 100 million, right? This is less than half of the amount of tokens that Axie Infinity can have. Um, with only 100 million tokens max supply, this coin is sort of already rare. It's already valuable, regardless of the mechanics of the in-game earning mechanisms, um, because it is a governance token, right? So this token is intended to be put on exchanges. It's intended to be staked and it's intended to be APR. It has a lot of utility outside of simply being an earning mechanism through a game. So that's that's what got us to our um, second uh, second star or second CC here. Um, well, and then minimum investment. So 10 B coin. So you can quickly look at the coin value, 10 B coin. You can look, oh, hey, look, it's going to cost me about $18 to get in. So th that's, that's a pretty big uh, issue or not a big issue. Sorry. That's a pretty big um, variable to consider. So expected earnings or well, what are the proof of earnings? Uh, well, we have a 20 to 40 day ROI. You, we may not always have that, especially during presale or uh, games that aren't out yet. Um, but let's look at the tokenomics. So this is what gave us our third CC. And this is the tokenomics. So the first one, if we remember, it's the first impression. It's the it's the investment before the request for money. So that's our first CC is have they invested a significant amount of time that would warrant in their project on their end that would warrant money from you, right? Because a lot of people just ask for money up front with a promise of something. And I would say, yes, these guys did present something. They didn't really do a pre-sale. They did a little bit of a private sale, but they launched a game. They had videos of the game uh, before the coin went live. So that was major automatically one confidence score. Uh, second confidence score was the system it was based on and uh, the, the the primary tokenomics, uh, which was the coin supply. Um, and this is where we're gonna get the third, which is an in-depth route of the tokenomics. This is where we measure its resiliency and uh, likelihood of maybe not even a rug pull, but a failure or a, a premature collapse. So you always want to be cautious when looking at these, right? Because a rug, pull, a rug pull would simply just lie about this. But you want to see the system and assume it's correct. So what do we have here? Well, they have 12% in reserves. Excellent. 5% to DEX liquidity. That's normal. 3% for advisors. Um, that's a little subjective. 25% to the team. 6% to the ecosystem fund. So here we have... Uh, and then a 1% listing on PancakeSwap that does require some amount of stuff. So we have ecosystem fund, we have advisor, and we have reserves. And maybe we can throw in the deck liquidity. So if we combine all these, right? Oh, and the team, sorry. So we have 25, 30%, uh, maybe not reserves because that's in a private wallet. So we'll do team, deck liquidity, which is 30%, and then 39%. So we know looking from this that the developers have 39% of the the assets in their hands at any given time so this is a pretty it's is it significant no it's okay uh but the earnings 
and private sale are what is most significant. So they actually have 20% for staking reward, which is a mechanic that's not out yet, 20% for play to earn, and then they have maybe about 8% for IDO and private sale. So this is sort of what got me excited was that 40% of their total allocation uh, for their 100 million, remember their limited coins, they've automatically locked away 40% simply for the earning mechanics. So that's pretty massive. Um, is it, It's. I think it's one of the best I've ever seen. So if we assume this is true, that is very promising. And we're gonna contrast this with a project that's only getting one confidence score. And we're gonna go through and cover and, and understand why that's the case. Um, and now for our last one. So what gave us our fourth star? Uh, that was the general gameplay of the game. So it was idle. Um, and that's an absolute minimum time investment. So you have a random mint and you have idle. Um, those are the in-game mechanics. And that's sort of a testament towards um, maybe not the whale resiliency, but the, the likelihood of the average person getting involved in the game and seeing uh, the potentiality to see to see massive revenue. Um, so the random minting allows for anyone to get lucky, right? That's what we like to see. We don't like to see things that are from the start uh, designed to be a top down. Like, oh, you can put in a hundred thousand. Well, guess what? You're going to be uh, gaining the majority of the rewards. Um, it's still loosely true, but it, but it, it means it's out of reach, right? You don't want it to be a ratio of what you can put in. You want to have some randomness. And then the idle. So this is where we exchange our labor. It's an idle play. You simply just have to let it let it run and be open. It's it's a nice uh, extended flow mechanic. Um, if 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 you could simply just make uh, if it was if it was completely skill, that might be a really big limiting factor for people. But the fact that it's simply just idle and in a browser sort of makes the playing field really equal. So the the way the mechanism to earn is what earned it. It's fourth uh, CC. Now, how is it not five? Uh, well, that's communication. So uh, do the developers and game designers communicate their intent effectively? Um, this isn't just in regards to their activeness on social media. This is more so, can they stick to their roadmap? Have they stick to their roadmap? Do they express issues frequently, right? If there's a problem, do they come in and announce, uh, announce the problem and uh, attempt to correct it in a timely fashion, right? So you just have to look at the developer's behavior. How active are they in this project? Um, these guys did not get one. They failed um, pretty, pretty miserably. Um, their, their, their discords, uh, they'll go several hours, if not um, days without making an announcement when an issue comes up. So that's why they didn't get their fifth confidence score. So the sum total, the four out of five, is the the context of the total resiliency of a game not just like oh how much money can you make in a game it's this game will likely be around for at least six months plus to a year at least that um just because the economy is so cyclical uh the developers have already put time invested it simply just makes the most sense that they would want to keep the game alive as long as possible to generate the most revenue right at about this score a rug pull wouldn't make sense they would simply make more money by actually honestly making an attempt at, a, at an honest game. So let's go through and contrast this with something at the bottom here that we just added called Elamon. So let's go to Elamon and understand what's going on. So this is playable, but let's understand why it got a one out of five. It's not bad, remember. This isn't like a one out of a, a, a game that's one out of five doesn't have the earning potential of a game that's five out of five or a game that's one out of five is a rug pull or can be a rug pull, right? We don't we don't put anything that remotely smells like a rug pull in this section. So everything in this section that's been reviewed is relatively safe and has been vetted. Um, we can never guarantee anything, obviously, uh, but it, it's passed the most tests. I don't think we've had anything rug really, uh, that's been reviewed. So let's look at the website. Well, it looks cool. What is this? This 2D artwork. Okay. I'm looking at this eight frame animation. That's not really good, right? I see this in a lot of mass produced mobile games and it sort of is a mobile game, right? Um, the website's kind of cool. 
It's a little clunky. They have a video for us. Let's watch it. Um, we have... Okay, this looks like a general YouTube template, right? You can get one of these free... I would almost guarantee this is a free template off YouTube. Um, you just download the Premiere file and input your text, right? This has nothing to do with Elemon. Uh, the colors are the same. Cool swirl animation, right? We're at a minute in and we haven't even gotten to anything about the game. Wh what am I watching? Right? So we have what? We have a... This is their front page, remember? This is trying to sell you to the game Corsair. So they have Corsair. Um, okay. Okay, that's an interesting video to put. Let's let's look at their, their thing here. Let's turn that down. So what do I see here? Um, well, it's they're cute, right? It's well made, but it does look like every I've I've seen this game maybe twenty times in the App Store, right? Kingdom Heroes, Knights of Avalor, uh, something Mon, right? Um, it's nothing special. It looks like a basic template that you can take in Unity or Unreal Engine and simply just input your own hand-drawn assets. Um, I didn't really see anything about the game besides it was a turn-based battler. Um, these do look custom. I don't think I've ever seen these before. But this right here, that victory, I'm pretty sure that's the end of everything. Uh, play to earn features, the roadmap. Let's look at the roadmap. It doesn't look bad, right? But there's some stuff. So we have some some information. Again, with that eight frame animation, you know, they could have easily uh, brought that up a bit. Um, and this is a massive red flag. So maybe not completely red flag, but it's generally not a good idea when people just flaunt a bunch of stuff like this. Um, it's not inherently bad. I've just seen a lot of rug pulls just falsely just stamp everybody on there. They really want you to know, hey, look, we're not a rug pull. Um, look at all these cool logos we can put at the bottom. So nothing really alarms me about this page. Just some quick notes where I was like, ah, you know, you don't get a star for this. Uh, it's fine. There's nothing really bad that sticks out besides that the, the 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 low frame rate animations and that weird uh, two minutes and fifty nine second YouTube uh, premiere template that was I don't know just telling you that they have a Corsair logo or that they teams with the Corsair um, before their their game so that sort of you know doesn't mean anything but it sets the tone right hey look. Look at all, look at how serious we are, of course, here with us before they showed you their gameplay. So uh, let's look at the docs. This is good. They have their contract addresses up there. That's really nice for safety. Now let's look at the tokenomics. So they didn't get one star for that. Um, original assets. I mean, I didn't even know anything about the game so far. I, I can tell it's kind of like Pokemon, um, but they didn't look like they put much effort in there, right? Um, if, if they really put a lot of effort in there, they would have showed you like, we have 5,000 original assets. Look at us, right? So... Uh, I don't know that they've spent a lot of time in this game. So they've really lost their first two uh, confidence scores, first two CCs out of show me what they have, right? It looks like a team of three or four can turn out these um, these app these app store games every week. One every week. They all have the same basic template, right? City builder templates, pet battler templates, they're all over the place. It does look like it's monitored for mobile. It's a lot easier to make a game for mobile, especially with all these templates. So uh, they don't get um, they don't get a CC for that. Let's look at the tokenomics. Um, so what's our max supply here? Two billion. So that's very high. Um, and a minimum investment of 25 BUSD. Uh, the game is out. That's great. That's low. That's for a lot of people, but it's locked to BUSD and it's not their Elmon token, which is of a large concern, right? So what what's going on here? Well, you're giving them a stable coin and they're giving you their made up coin. So that doesn't mean it's a rug pull and it's not extremely uncommon, but it's something you want to sort of pay attention to. 
because uh, you don't want to be exchanging something that has objective value with something that has subjective value. So if they said, hey, buy our coin and then uh, spend our coin to purchase our product, that's a little bit different, right? Because that means that they now have to place value in their in their coin. Um, they're the ones holding the coins. They're the ones that's going to be their revenue. So it's it, it's in their best interest to to have uh, their coin pump and to do things and make decisions around basing, uh, improving the value of their coin. So they're getting BUSD, so they don't care the value of their coin, right? Um, they only care that uh, they're making X dollars a month. I'm not saying this is what's happening. I'm saying that's what can potentially be happening. Uh, and you need a team of three, so it's $100 for every person. So let's look at this graph. Again, remembering that these could be wrong. So we have some red flags here. So we have 5% liquidity, which is fine. A 13% private round, which is interesting. 28, no, 20.5% for marketing and 8% for partners and advisors. So right out of the gate, we have, let's do this uh, so we don't mess it up. We have 18% for the team. Fine. Pay yourself. You know, you put in a lot of work, maybe. 20 for marketing. And here's what we're going to do here. Um, seed round, 3.4. Why are we including seed round and private? Because it's possible, it's highly possible that these are simply dev wallets. We've seen this happen all the time. Um, you give 13% to private investors. These are friends of friends. These are family members. These are multiple dev wallets, right? I'm not saying that's what's happening, but this allows for it. Um, in a 1% public round, so they get allowed 1% of the coins, 13%, right? So this is, again, framing the priorities. This is a money-making game. This is not a let's make a good game. This is a let's make a microtransaction mobile game. And then 31% to ecosystem and farming. So let's compare that with Bomb Crypto. So right now, the developers have six, potentially up to 62% control, obligatory control, over the entire token distribution so what does that mean uh well if they're ready to dump they're gonna dump and the price is gonna go to zero um so that's a little concerning we don't know what ambiguous term marketing is partner and advisors well we know some of that probably they probably paid up corsair right and then private round let's just assume that to them as well um that's again not saying it's what's happening but likely to happen compare this with bomb crypto uh, remember, we're at, what, 25, 30. Did they even put liquidity in here? Yeah, they did. 5%. I remember, they have access to this, too, and they can pull the liquidity. So 30% reserves. Remember, reserves is tied up in a public wallet. So as soon as that gets touched, um, it's a massive red flag. So they can't touch it, really. They might have tech. They might have custodial access to it, but they, they can't move it, right? Like marketing. If we review marketing, they can spend this and send this wherever they want and then just put out a post that says, oh, we hired a marketing person, you know, and they're just sending it to their own wallet. So same with partners and advisors. This could all be a dev wallet. Who knows? Um, so that's that's what I'm saying, assuming that all of these have their own dev wallets. So we're 62 percent dev control compared to which is more than half compared to uh, 25, 30. 33, 39, because we'll count the private sale. So 39, um, that's a lot. So 39%, I'm sorry, that's not a lot. 39%, 62%. It's almost double. So, or maybe it's, a little, it's, a, it's 1.5 times more. So it's significant, right? You don't, it's not, doesn't mean it's inherently bad, but you don't get any points for it. And that's the primary thing. So how did they get their one confidence score? Uh, well, they have a playable game. That's basically it. It is playable and they have functioning system. So yeah, you can you can probably earn from it. Is it likely to be a rug pull? Probably not. Um, simply because with these tokenomics would suggest that it's just better, it's in their best interest to just milk people for all that they have. Um, so it's likely that this game will just slowly uh, crash in earnings over time. Um, so 
yeah, I think we went over pretty much everything. Um, it there is uh, we do allow for one CC to be uh, one that that fourth and final to be subjective. So it's the general feel of the game, right? Because if you've reviewed it and you've reviewed everything, yeah, everything fits together. The to tokenomics fits with what they said they're trying to do, right? Because if you look at all these things individually, you can say, hey, we're all about the, if these guys said we're all about the community, you know, uh, we, we gave out $4.8 billion in tokens. And you're like, hey, wait a second. You only have a max supply in this. And you, you know, you only have this. Uh, how, that's, it's technically impossible. So that's where, where, where one of our, um, professors can simply take away a confidence score or add a confidence score is is if how open they are and um how how honest everyone's being so it's a little subjective but it's subjective within objective guidelines and so that's one of our primary assets that's one of the, the primary things you want to get into crypto college is we've pre-vetted these games for you right we go through and and do the legwork so you should be able to just select, maybe even ask about, and have all the immediate information there in front of you that you would probably ask. Um, but all in all, it's a great system. It's done so well so far. Um, none of the games we've subjected have even remotely rug pulled, right? They've gone through ebb and flows, of course, like every project, but it seems to be working well so far. So we encourage you, use these resources, right? Join us in Crypto College. We are going to be releasing our NFT soon. We're going to be launching uh, maybe our own cryptocurrency. We just have a great community. We're all earning some big money, even through dips. So go ahead and like this video, subscribe to us. We always do project reviews and join our discord. That's the most important part because that's where you get the firsthand knowledge um, and you get to communicate with us directly. So I'm Nate with Crypto College. Thanks for looking at us. Check out our PDE games in our discord and have fun in the metaverse boys uh let's let's get this earning through this dip no matter what happens